It is still amazing to me that we are now paying upwards of $800 for discs. This is Jay Contra, your man in Japan, and I'm coming to you from the Sapporo branch of Mandarake. You can tell it's Mandarake because there's just so many games and we've got a huge, massive showcase. Hokkaido's a really weird place where it's very agrarian, very agricultural, but Sapporo is this huge city of at least a million people, I think, somewhere around there. And so it's got all of the amenities to boot. And that includes an $800 copy of Sapphire for the PC Engine CD. We even have a few copies of Magical Chase for the PC Engine. And they even have a copy of <laughs> Rondo of Blood for, let's see, 250 bucks, maybe almost, um, the exchange rate's now almost uh, 100 to 100, so we're very nearly, uh, it's almost $280 for this copy of Rondo of Blood. And it, it's probably more expensive because it's got the belt right there that I'm trying to show in the middle of the frame without getting the glare. That can up the price substantially, and I actually want to go more in depth to Mandarake's pricing scheme. But for now, I'll just show off the showcase. Here's, I, this is probably my favorite shooter of all time. I'm just gonna say it. I thought maybe Summer Carnival 92 might be it, but Battle Garega, oh my God. Oh, and 180 bucks, that's a steal. This used to be a $250 game. Now we've even got Street Fighter Alpha 3 for the Saturn is $200. That's absolutely insane, but that's, that's the version that people want, I guess. What else we got? We got some in inappropriate content right there. So let's just skip over that to Gate of Thunder for the for the Super CD, the PC Engine CD. That's going for $100. They do have a lot of very interesting titles here. We've got Dodonpachi up there. That's an, um, I've played Dodonpachi, and I thought that was a really very fun shooter. I thought the, the music for it was quite incredible. Um, that's going for $90. And then we also have Ikaruga going for a hundred dollars and that's in an A grade. See what? Yeah, you know what? Screw it. We're gonna go and I'm gonna try and explain Mandarake's pricing because I think it's inherent you should know about how Mandarake price its, prices its games before you actually buy something and I'm and I found something quite peculiar. You see there's this whole row of Sega Saturn and Dreamcast games. We'll go back to the showcase in a minute, but I wanted to show you something because I want to buy, I want to buy Street Fighter Alpha 3. I don't want to buy the, I don't want to buy, I mean, I do want to buy the Sega Saturn version, but I don't have the cash for that. So instead, you know what, I'll slum it and I will get the Dreamcast version. Now here we go. We have this copy right here and try and get, yeah. So this copy right here. Okay, looks, it looks good. It's eight bucks. A little wear on the manual, yeah, but to me it looks good. It looks in a good. It looks a good grade. It's been rated B. You can see over here some guy named Takeda. He rated this a B, and so it's eight dollars. But then, hold on, let me see. I want to make sure I'm getting consistent here because I'm going to get into the differences not only in between grading, but in between uh, in between having for CD-based games having the OB or the belt. So here we go. This is same game it's been rated b the disc is b the manual is b um okay it's fine it's eight it's eight bucks so here we have these two games same rating eight dollars each put that away for a second now we go and we have one with the belt it's it's been it's got a b rating for the disc and it's got a c rating for the manual so the manual has been rated as worse by the same guy all of these have been rated by Takeda, and they all look like they've been written the same. Takeda is a fairly, a fairly uh, common name in Japan. But here we go. It's a B and a C. This is fifteen dollars now. So just having this, this strip of paper right here, that strip of paper that encompasses the edge, this is something they did in Japan with CDs. Not only, mu not just games, but also music CDs as well. Just this strip of paper right here is worth seven dollars, and actually slightly more, because here we go. This is a B graded. You can see here it is a B and a B graded by the same guy in a, the same quality, allegedly. 
according to this Takeda guy, they have been rated the same in terms of quality. But this strip of paper here is apparently worth $24. You can buy this copy at a B rating overall for $8, or you can buy this copy here for $32. This paper, $24. So that's, I don't know exactly like, I don't know if the, if the belt is given a, a proper value. I honestly do not understand how these games, I don't know what the grading qualifications are. I don't get it. But that's something to look out for. If you're like me, if you're like me and you do not care about that belt, I'm buying this copy. I'll, I would love to have Street Fighter for $8. I don't need it for $32. <laughs> then we got Sonic Adventure. Let's just start pulling games. We'll go back to the showcase in a little bit. More Sonic Adventure. Dancing Blade? I've not heard of this game. Hmm. I love the Dreamcast art. The Dreamcast art, what I loved about the Dreamcast was they just let you put 2D art on stuff. It wasn't like, like the N64. Well, eh, that's not true. In Japan, they were actually quite good about letting you put 2D art on stuff. Oh, wow. That's actually, hmm, interesting. Mars Matrix. It's a cool shooting game. This is 60 bucks. That might actually be a pretty good deal. I'm not... It's definitely been on my radar, but I'm not... I don't know that much about it to say whether or not it's a good... It's a good steal at $65 or not. And we also have some Berserk. And then, okay, let's... You know what? We'll make a way... We'll make our way back to the showcase by way of... Where did I pull... Ah, oh, yes. So we have here Resident Evil 2 for the Nintendo 64. This has got... Okay, it's a B and C grade... But if you look at here, it says there, the box has, a, has some big damage. It says Hako Itami Dai. That means it's got huge damage somewhere to the box. And I'm now going to try, we're going to go in with a fine tooth comb. And we're going to try and see if there's any damage to the box anywhere. Any, any damage you would qualify as big. Would you qualify? I have not seen anything that would make me think that there is a great amount of damage to this box. This box looks perfectly fine to me. So you could buy this $70 copy. Well, okay, $65, $60, $65, maybe $70 once you include the tax. You can buy that somewhat rare N64 game. It's certainly uncommon. You could do that. Or, let's, uh, where are the N64 games? They are. Ah, yes. Wait, were they up there? Oh, there's just, see, there's just so much stuff that it's kind of hard to keep track. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of move the phone around while I look for the N64 games. Where did they go? I, I swear to God, I saw it. I promise you, I must be losing my mind. This is the more modern stuff. Where did it go? I know it exists, I know it's around here somewhere. <laughs> Hold on, look at these beautiful look at this beautiful Hello Kitty blue console. Oh my god, I know I saw it. <laughs> oh man, this is this is what happens when uh you don't plan that much ahead. Like when apparently the the print run for Star Wars the Clone Wars for the GameCube was so low that it's now become a hundred dollar game. It's hundred and ten dollars even. Where did the N64 games go? I saw it, so okay, so what happened was I saw, I saw that they had, they had a showcase copy of Biohazard 2, Resident Evil 2, and it has, it has disappeared. Someone didn't buy it, did they? <laughs> Am I hallucinating? Oh my god. I swear, okay, I'm, I must be going crazy. Final Fight Tough, you can get that for $400, $400, it's not worth $400. Oh, it's right in front of me, right here. Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't even see it. Let's see, hopefully, we, hopefully you can, oh, I wish it would lighten the screen a bit, but there's a $100 copy. And if for some reason it's $100, whereas the other one, which had apparently some damage to the case, you could save yourself $35 by buying that. 
you could maybe even save yourself even more money by not buying Rendering Ranger R2, the most expensive Super Famicom game. It's coming in, it's clocking in at $2,100. This might actually be the most expensive game in the showcase. I mean, I don't even, I, like, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's a fine game. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth $2,000. We've got some pretty good Genesis shooters. I mean, some good shooters. We got V5 clocking in at about four, at about four hundred and forty dollars and then sh oh, for shame I can't believe Castlevania this is I, I can't remember the na the English title for this but this is the third Castlevania for the Game Boy Advance and it's over a hundred dollars it's hundred and twenty dollars which is just to me unbelievable that these Castlevania games we've got Castlevania um, Dracula X at a hundred and fifty hundred and sixty dollars that's just absolutely like I want to play Castlevania but they're just not letting me they're not letting me Oh wow, and a box copy of Metal Storm at $180. That's good. I think a cart a cart of this would normally go for $200 in Tokyo. So you, when you come to Sapporo, if you're going to come to this, if you're going to come to the Mandarake in Sapporo, you have to be prepared to pay Tokyo prices for things. Um, but you could perhaps get a few good deals. But they got, uh, okay, we got... Symphony of the Night for the for the Sega Saturn going for 120 bucks. That's fine. It's fine. I think here's really you're not gonna find steals here unless you go for the lower the lower graded games. Oh, well, this Metal Wolf Chaos, 120 bucks for a B rated game. Uh, that does not bode well. I think it's gonna even shoot up more in price, especially once Xbox collecting nostalgia comes in. Well, $65 for a Super Famicom, that's high. I mean, you could probably get it from a hard off for, what, 40 bucks now? And then they do have the Core Graphics 2 complete in box for a pretty, that's, yeah, 200 bucks. You know, it's in good, very good condition. The box is in good condition, I should say. You can't see the, the console, so the console could be a complete disaster. <laughs> and then here we've got a pearl pink Game Boy Advance SP. I actually just bought one of these for about 3,000 yen out of the box, but here in the box, and I bet the console's in good condition, because if someone's gonna keep the box, I'll bet you anything they're gonna keep the console, the the portable itself. They're not gonna be dropping that thing. And here's a loose, this is actually pretty good. It's, there's no yellowing, it's a good condition. Super Famicom coming in at $40. And wow, I can't, oh my God. PlayStation games getting, getting above a hundred dollars this is this is not good folks if PlayStation 2 games are going above a hundred dollars like what like what are we supposed to do just all the games are going to get expensive there's just no there's no going back <sighs> just take a spin I'm gonna hopefully this works hopefully this works we're gonna take a look at some cartridges Oh, oh, Double Dragon 3. I recommend you do not play this game because it sucks. Double Dragon 1 and 2 are amazing. Double Dragon 3 is terrible and no one should uh, no one should suffer through that game. I'm Batman. And you can be Batman too for $18. Oh, and then here's a uh, it's a nice little note. This is um this is Bionic Commando, which they called Hitler's Revenge. In Japan, or they well, yeah, they call it Hitero no, no uh, Fukatsu Top Secret here in Japan. But I guess they didn't want to have a game with Hitler in it in America, so they decided to just call it Bionic Commando. Is it because he has the grapple arm? Is that what makes him like a cyber commando? I do like what they've done with this particular section. Because in in Tokyo, because space is so limited, they would normally have the they would normally have cartridges just kind of like like this. You wouldn't even it would just be a whole row of cartridges slotted like this. So you couldn't. It'd be so hard to tell what each cartridge is. But they've got the faces out here, so you're able to see what game is what. And they also I should note that they do grade the cartridges. So here we've got Mario Three. It's got apparently some, again, big damage to the cartridge somewhere. I can't tell where. Like, look at this, okay. Here we go, let's go in. It's got Itami Dai, it's got a damage, it's got damage somewhere. 
I mean, maybe the back is not perfect, that back label. And this is $6. This is $9 over here, and that's apparently supposed to be in pristine condition, so. Oh, I, it's all beyond me, folks. <laughs> But you can find games for just about any system here. You can even find Mega CD games. Yeah, you can find, ooh, you can find Game Gear games. You can find, wow, loose Game Gear games. As well as some special, you can find special edition Saturn games. You can also find, oh, okay, this is, this is bizarre. This is the most bizarre thing that I've found, but you can find, I think these are supposed to be like, I don't know exactly, but these are, okay, so these are VHS tapes. This is a VHS tape for Parodius. I don't understand if this is supposed to be like a strategy guide, like, I'm, I'm guessing so, because it's made by like a video game, like a, a, a like a, a publishing outlet. So I'm guessing this is supposed to be like, I don't know if it's like a making of, or like, Orange Bajonsk. I don't even know what this is supposed to be, like, is this, do you just, is it like a Let's Play? Is it a VH version of a Let's Play? <laughs> like you can watch someone play Street Fighter 2 real good, and then you can practice yourself. Like here we've got someone for, for Doronpachi. You can buy it, you can buy the game itself for 90 bucks, and then you can buy this for $40, this VHS tape. <laughs> oh wait, okay. Yeah, so okay, so yeah, so here if you read this here, it says, um, someone selects a particular, oh, it is the top player in the country, and you watch him play through the game twice. So you just, you, so, so back in the day, people would just buy VHS Let's Plays, or VHS Long Plays. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so glad I solved that mystery. <laughs> but there's one last thing I wanted to show you. And it's very appropriate, and it's something that kind of makes me angry. Well, although this Game Boy Light is pretty cool. This is actually a backlit Game Boy. These are only ever released in Japan. And here you've got an uh, Astro Boy version coming in at $450. And you've got one for, uh, oh yeah, another Astro Boy, a red Astro Boy one coming in at $420. But something that infuriates me, something that I wish was different about video games was Contra Hardcore. This is $450. A $100 American game at best. But it's $450 in Japan because the Mega Drive never took off here. And so on that note, on, on VHS Let's Plays and expensive Contras, I have been Jay Contra coming to you from the, Man the Mandarake Sapporo saying thanks for watching. See you next time, and mahalo.